وزين حذي وقتي أوي لو تهملنا مالت أبذل حرفتات صحي درقي ذي شجر ناس بيخونا أنس سامعة نوريو أبذل حذي وقت مالت كابذي عم تداز مالت أنا ما أخل ما أخل حلف حلف صقمات النهر هنا جينا بزن حزيد نهنايا بزن حزيد نهنايا خرمت هون تصبق خرمت إنه بزن حزي بتلاقينا حزي قبل حلف حاجة يون تصبق ما أدي كراي مع ترى حدا قص حزي خرمت رحوي بهالنا وروح زين متعمي صقابي وخلوون عتيق بزن حلف حاجة له حزي بزن حزي لما راح هي خرمتها هم كأت مسل جبارس اللي حب قص له ساعات إنه بزن حزي بتيد بحال لما زين حامر معك أي تدخل تدخل تات لما عوي أو مصراقية أو تأيس ميسر الناس لوت إنه هو أبدا حذو وقت بتريس صبق أزمرايو نفاس أيرون صبق إنه حذي When farmers plant trees around their fields, when communities dig buns to catch and retain rainwater. They change the local climate around them. In parts of Bolivia and Peru, for thousands of years, farmers have been cultivating crops on raised fields surrounded by water-filled canals that insulate the plants from extreme cold during winters and also provide them moisture during summers. In Ethiopia, Extensive soil conservation and water harvesting works have been carried out across the country for more than a decade. Several structures, big and small, have been built to trap runoff, harvest rainfall, increase soil moisture and reduce soil erosion. Villages and clusters of villages where such work has been carried out on large scale report increased humidity, more moderate temperatures and higher rainfall than neighboring areas. Microclimates are very local conditions created by the interplay of different elements of the local landscape. To understand microclimates as systems, and to plan interventions to make these systems more resilient, they can be visualized as being made of five building blocks. Soil moisture, soil temperature, air temperature, humidity, and wind direction and speed. These blocks are interconnected. Apart from determining the microclimate of a local area, they also affect each other. Soil moisture is determined by the soil's capacity to store moisture, which depends on the soil structure. Soil structure is a result of the texture of the soil, which means how much clay, silt and sand it is made of. Certain soil structures allow for more percolation and absorption of water than others. Similarly, certain soils are more resistant to wind and water erosion than others. Soil structure also determines how easily water can travel through the soil. This is important as it determines how easily moisture from the bottom layers of the soil can travel up to the root zone of the plant when it loses water to evapotranspiration. Optimum soil moisture levels support microbes that fix nitrogen in the soil and release nutrients which make the soil fertile. However, too much of it can crowd out the oxygen levels in the soil, which in turn can slow down microbial activity. Soil moisture has a moderating effect on air and soil temperatures, and therefore an overall moderating effect on the local microclimate, as we saw in the case of the Waruwaru canals in South America. A key factor determining local air and soil temperature is the albedo, or the ability of a landscape to reflect back incoming radiation from the sun. Apart from the moisture levels in the soil, this is affected by soil texture, vegetation cover, and the amount of organic matter in the soil. Humidity, or the moisture level of the air, is another key marker of microclimatic conditions. 
it is in turn affected by the interplay between incoming radiation, available moisture, wind patterns and thermal currents in the atmosphere. High humidity levels help the formation of dew, mist, fog and even clouds. Dew is an important source of moisture for plant growth in dry environments. At a large scale, winds are caused by the differences in atmospheric pressure. At local levels, topography, temperature differences, forests, water bodies, natural and man-made barriers affect wind direction and speeds. Winds have a cooling effect on the local microclimate as they remove warm air around plants. Wind also removes excess humidity, reducing the potential for plant diseases. Besides, the air movement in the canopy of the vegetation is necessary to maintain CO2 levels essential for plant growth. Wind also serves to transport soil, nutrients and seeds across the landscape. On the flip side, winds can cause soil erosion. To minimize that, at the farm level, wind can be channeled or blocked away from plants through the use of vegetation corridors or barriers called wind breaks. Wind breaks are typically rows of plants or trees, shielding the soil and crops from wind damage. In dry areas, wind breaks can also be used to slow down evapotranspiration from plants to reduce the amount of water they use up. Microclimates can either moderate or amplify the effects of wider climate change. So microclimate management is aimed at creating resilient ecosystems and resilient agriculture that are less vulnerable to climate extremes and variability. It is important that interventions take into account how different microclimate components are interconnected so that interventions addressing one component do not have adverse effects on another. Interventions can be clustered into those that focus on water buffering, which is harvesting of rainwater and runoff and retaining it as soil moisture or shallow groundwater. Regreening or increasing the vegetation cover over a landscape and adopting the approach of land use planning to make sure that microclimate management interventions can be implemented over a large scale and that they are coordinated enough to multiply each other's effects. There are numerous examples from India, China, Rwanda and Ethiopia where coordinated high density improvements in the watershed have helped achieve systemic changes like regeneration of groundwater, increase in the availability of soil moisture, and increase in vegetation cover. These changes have effectively driven changes in local microclimates. Microclimate interventions can help optimize temperature and moisture at local level in ways that can help counter the negative effects of global climate change. So microclimate management is a proactive intervention at the local level that can complement adaptation and mitigation efforts dependent on national and global level interventions.